titrations today. You guys have watched a couple of videos and you've either refreshed your memories or learned about titrations, depending on what your exposure was last year. Um, my intention for this time in our class had been to get you all really good at the mechanics of doing the titrations. I thought that was a nice skill for you to head off to college with. We can't really do that now. So instead what I want you to get is a really solid understanding of what's happening in the on the molecular level in a titration. Um, we're going to do what we can. So the first titration we want to talk about is a strong acid titrated by a strong base. Our sort of quintessential strong acid is HCl, and our quintessential strong base is NaOH. <clears throat> Before I start thinking about this reaction in terms of the actual mechanics of the titration, I want to write a balanced equation. It's a neutralization reaction. I'm going to start with aqueous HCl and aqueous NaOH. Hopefully we look at that and we think to ourselves, I think a double displacement reaction is going to happen here because we have two ionic substances. HCl is a little in the middle, but we'll call it that for now. So we're going to swap our cations. The Na is now going to be with the Cl, which is aqueous. And the other product will be HOH, better known as H2O. Anytime we have a reaction with ions in solution, we could also write a complete ionic equation and a net ionic equation. I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead to the net ionic equation. I'm going to hope that you all can see at a glance that the spectator ions will be the sodium and the chloride. If not, you might want to pause the video, write out the complete ionic equation, and see what's going to cancel. But I'll just tell you that our net ionic equation here will be H plus and OH minus reacting to form H2O. So far, so good. All right. The only thing we have to sort of decode with that statement up there, that strong acid by strong base, is this tells us which solution is where. We are titrating a strong acid by the strong base. So the strong acid is our analyte. The HCl is the one that's down here in the Erlenmeyer flask. <clears throat> and then up here in the burette, It's going to be our NaOH. But as we wrote up there, there is no HCl in this solution. There is no NaOH in this burette. What we have instead are their ions. So what I want to do is I want to think through an imaginary titration. And as we do this, I want to create a pH curve. We're going to make some assumptions as we go through this, some assumptions that are not exactly true, but are going to give us a good qualitative understanding of this, even if some of the numbers aren't quite right. So um, that's going to be our middle ground for pH. It's going to be 7 for this titration. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's a 0. And then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. As a reminder, the pH scale does not stop at zero. It goes as low as it needs to, nor does it stop at 14. It goes as high as it needs to. That's our y-axis. Our x-axis is going to be NaOH added. <clears throat> when we're doing these for real, it's volume of NaOH. We're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to add moles of NaOH and pretend like we can do that without changing the volume because I think it's going to make this easier to understand. So what I want to start with is I want to start with 6 H pluses in this solution. And for our purposes, we're going to say that 1 H plus is equal to 0.1 mole of H plus, which is the concentration. So if each of those H pluses represents 0.1 moles, then in this beaker we have 0.6 moles and we're going to pretend like the volume of the speaker is exactly one liter. Okay? So then, the concentration of H plus in this speaker is equal to 0.6 molar. And the pH of this imaginary solution is just minus the log of 0.6. So, minus the log, 0.6, gives me a pH of 0.22. So here's zero, here's one, we're less than a quarter of the way. 
We've got a pretty low pH there. Okay, now we're going to begin the titration. And we're going to begin the titration by adding 0.1 moles of NaOH. And we're going to pretend like we can add NaOH without changing the volume of the solution. Is this true? No, this is not true. But it's a thought experiment that we're doing here, and the conclusions that we're going to come to are going to be accurate. So I'm adding NaOH, but when I add NaOH, the Na doesn't matter. In the same way that the chloride didn't matter here, the Na doesn't matter here. So we're going to pretend like we're just adding hydroxide. And what this hydroxide is going to do, if we're adding 0.1, it's going to neutralize one of these H pluses. It's going to add itself to one of those H pluses and become water. So how has our solution changed? Now we've got fewer H pluses. Now we have five H pluses, which means we're going to call that 0.5 moles of H plus in one liter of solution, a 0.5 molar solution. Our concentration of H plus has gone down, which means that our pH had better have gone up. I want to take minus the log of 0.5. Sure enough, it's gone all the way up to 0.3. So is that higher? Yeah, it has to be. You can't add a strong base to a solution and have the pH do anything but go up, but it's barely going up. All right, let's do it again. Let's add another 0.1 moles. So now we will have added a total of 0.2 moles. This next OH minus is going to neutralize one more H plus. Now we have four H pluses in our picture, which is 0.4 molar, which is a pH of 0.4. <clears throat> so is our pH increasing? Yes. Is our pH increasing by much? No, it is not. All right, let's add another one. When we've added 0.3 moles of OH minus, that next OH minus neutralizes one more H plus. So now we have three H pluses or 0.3 molar, which gives us a pH of 0.52, which is higher. Again, it's going to have to go up. All right, 0.4, we're neutralizing this one. We're left with only 0.2 molar and a pH of 0 0.7. 0 0.5 moles of um, OH minus added, neutralizes this guy. We're left with only 0.1 moles in solution. When I find the pH of that, I'll find that my pH is 1. So <clears throat> in the process of this, I have increased my pH from 0 0.022 at the beginning to 1 now. Now, I add one more OH. This OH minus neutralizes the final remaining H plus. And what is my concentration of H plus in the solution? I think your initial answer was probably to say 0. And that's, those are good instincts, and that's what you're seeing in the picture. But remember the auto-ionization of water. Every time we have water, it reacts with itself or breaks apart by itself to create a concentration of H3O plus and a concentration of OH minus, both equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7, which means that this pH is 7. All of a sudden, my pH has jumped up from less than one, less than one, less than one, just barely one, to seven. And it did that when we added 1.1 more moles of OH minus. That jump is characteristic of a strong acid, strong base titration. We had H plus in solution, and we've been neutralizing it with acid, and now the H plus is gone. <laughs> the only thing we have in solution now in our picture is water. It's worth remembering that what we actually have in solution also is Na plus and Cl minus. But we don't have to stop the titration now. What we're going to do with the titration, we're going to continue with the titration. We're going to add 0.1 more for a total of 0.7. Now this added OH minus has no H plus to neutralize. So it's just going to have an extra OH minus in solution. So now 
we have a concentration of OH minus equaling 0.1 moles in what we're still pretending is a one liter solution. So the concentration of OH minus is now 0.1 moles. That means that we can find the pOH of this solution, which will be one. Is that the pH? Does our pH go back down? No, that can't happen. We added base. Our pH has to keep increasing. Ah, this is the pOH. We're supposed to be finding the pH. To find the pH from the pOH, we just remember that they add to 14. So now the pH of this solution is 13. In 0.2 moles of base added, we've gone from a pH of 1 to a pH of 7 to a pH of 13. <clears throat> pOH of 0.2, which gives me, or sorry, a concentration of OH minus of 0.2, a pOH of 0.7, and a pH of 13.3. The pH is going to keep rising as we add more base because it has to, but that giant leap has stopped. It's going to go up basically in the same way, basically, huh, that it was going up before. So I'm just going to put pretend numbers out here. We're not going to go ahead and do the calculations. But as I continue to add OH minus, the OH concentration will technically increase, but barely. In fact, I probably have it increasing a little bit too much. So if I try to draw a smooth curve to connect these points, I'm going to find that the pH is low, but technically rising. It shoots up and then is low, is high, but technically rising. This range where it goes from like a pH of basically 1 to a pH of basically 13, this is right around the end point or the equivalence point of titration. Phenolphthalein is clear in these pH ranges. It's purple in this pH range. And it's, it, does, it only takes a tiny volume added of NaOH to make this change happen. I want to think about what's dominating the pH of the solution at every point along this curve. All along this beginning part, we have excess H plus in solution. The amount of excess H plus is decreasing as we move to the right. Every OH minus that we add neutralizes an H plus and raises the, constant, raises the pH just a little bit. At this point here, we have nothing. Well, we have Na plus, Cl minus, and H2O in solution. But all of those are, are neutral in terms of pH. And then beyond this point, we have actual excess OH minus. All right? Now, we could flip this. We could flip which one has the acid and which one has the base. We could titrate a strong base by a strong acid. We would start with the OH minus down in the flask and the HCl in the burette. And we would do almost exactly the reverse. We would start with extra OH minuses here and a pH that was very, very high. As we added acid, the pH would go down just a little bit with each added amount of acid until that acid had neutralized the base. And then as we added more and more acid, the pH would suddenly become very, very low. And it would be sort of if we flipped this curve over, that's what we would get. All right, this is what happens in a strong acid, strong base titration. Weak acid, strong base titrations are more interesting and kind of more important. Um, so that's what we'll talk about tomorrow.